Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, so uh, thanks for coming along today. We are here to talk about everyone's favorite subject from 25 years ago. Um, so a friend of mine said this to me when I told him what our research was about. And yeah, it holds true. I mean, Windows has got some stuff going on. So let's find out exactly how broken it is. So real quickly, we're from there. Uh, that's a very accurate map. We're from the middle of Middle Earth, a little place called Wellington in New Zealand. And yeah, it was a long flight. It was too long. It was too long an economy. Anyway, a little bit about me. I've worked at a bunch of logos, which is very exciting. Um, I also had a life before hacking where I used to tour a lot of bands to New Zealand. So please don't ask me about the early 2000s because I have PTSD and a lot of debt. Um, I'm also a former software developer. I'm a relatively active security researcher, uh, a few CVEs in various things. I'm a frequent flyer with CERT New Zealand, which is the cybersecurity emergency response team. They love me. Please don't ask me about council software. And I'm Thomas. I have also worked at uh, fewer logos than Jim. I'm a little bit younger than Jim. Um, I also do some CTF stuff. And I'm also a senior security consultant. I also do research. Um, I found a fun thing a few years ago in Kiteworks. Also did the uh, Kramer thing with Jim a couple of slides ago. Don't know if you remember. And then also the Microsoft stuff in this talk. So this talk is about NTLM. NTLM is supposedly going away. Every NTLM bug we've seen has usually been a gateway bug to something better. Like, usually it leads into something that's quite nice, sometimes a bounty. It has been an absolute ride with the MSRC. They have a very hard job. We met with them the other yeah. day. And we did have to change some of our talk because it turns out they're actually quite nice. Yeah, when you like meet them and they've got faces and names, you kind of feel a little bad. Oops. Uh, Windows has an overwhelming desire to authenticate to everything that it can. It just likes sending hashes out like there's no tomorrow. And the Windows ecosystem is very vast and very fun. So NTLM, we are not going to give it a stupid name. Someone called SQLI Squealy, and it still haunts you. It stands for New Technology Land Manager. Um, there's something about calling things new in technology that means it's going to be around forever. And it's up there with the simple in SNMP and lightweight in LDAP. So NTLM was developed in the 90s, like a few of you here. Um, it's preceded by LM, and this is finally completely removed in server 2025. So it hasn't been removed yet. Uh, it was intended to provide authentication, integrity, and confidentiality. So far, so good. This is, you know, what you expect out of NTLM. Uh, they've recommended not to use it since 2010. Does anyone know what year we're in now? Uh, there was a 2011 DEF CON talk that I watched called Nail the Coffin Shut, NTLM is dead. It failed to die. So uh, there are a crap load of CDEs um, associated with this protocol. So essentially at its core, it is a hash of a password, uh, also called an NT hash. It's a challenge response mechanism, so the client establishes a network path and negotiates. The server responds with a challenge message. The client responds with an authenticate message. And it does this using the NT hash. And there's a couple of different flavors that we're going to be talking about, which is mostly net NTLM v1 and net NTLM v2. So on a network, essentially, this lets you browse file shares and websites. So some quick definitions before we get stuck into the bugs. Uh, a hash is data produced from one-way function, so you don't have to pass your plain text password around. I've been asked to localize my talk, so this is essentially the equivalent of turning a cow into a hot dog. It's uh, expensive to get the hot dog back into the cow. Um, so a UNC is the universal naming convention, you know, a slash slash thing. HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol, and URI, the uniform resource handler. So what happens if you steal one? There's kind of three things. You can brute force it, turn it back into a clear text password, uh, talk to the password cracking village about how quickly they can do it these days. 
You can also relay it and pretend to be that person. Um, that's mainly with NTLM and NTLM v1. Uh, NTLM v2 does it sometimes just for fun. And you can also just take a screenshot of it, report it to the MSRC, uh, have a fun conversation with them. Yeah. So we did a few minutes of Googling, and these are all the bugs that we found in like three minutes about NTLM. There's also the MorpheSec talk that was yesterday. Um, they went into some more NTLM stuff there, but it's a doozy. There was the Monica Link one this year, uh, the Windows Themes file as well. You could just load a theme and it would send off your hash for fun. Outlook sound files, which was like a zero click RCE, there was a bypass for that and then a bypass for that again, I think. And yeah, some other ones, everyone's favorite, Petit Patan. So NTLM is just a host of vulnerabilities. A lot of it is just by design, we won't fix it. I mean, it's old. So what they're doing, is they're going to deprecate it and then eventually disable it, which is kind of fixing it, I guess. And given that like half of the environments in little old New Zealand still use NTLM v1, it's going to take a long time. So we have it on good authority, an anonymous source at Microsoft who actually confirmed this for us and he said to us when we met them, the runway for this is between 50 and 100 years. So, yeah. So it's going to be disabled on a future version of Windows 11. This is great. And they have told us that they're stopping working on it. So it's feature complete, apparently. So now Windows will attempt to authenticate with Kerberos first, which is really secure and great. But it still falls back to NTLM if a Kerberos negotiation doesn't happen. And so it's going to be disabled in a future release. And it can always be re-enabled, just like NTLM v1. So <clears throat> one of the tools we've been using is a very, very well-known tool. We're not going to go too much into it. Um, this is Responder, the rogue authentication server, um, developed by Algandex. Please go and flick them some money for this great tool. Uh, the two ports that we are concerned with, port 80 and port 445, and it provides um, authentication challenges on these ports and a lot of others. It does some other cool stuff. It's a very valuable pen testing tool. If you've never heard of it, go run it in an internal network and brighten your SOC team. Um, for our purposes, we're just going to use it to collect hashes. So this current obsession with NTLM hashes started a couple of years ago. I was testing an ArcGIS application. So for those of you not familiar with ArcGIS, uh, it's mapping software beloved by local government. And I asked my workmate, um, Ahmad, if he had any tricks. He was a very high-ranked bug crowd guy, so of course he did. He suggested I run Responder on one of our servers for a blind SSRF that we had found. And we got a hash on port 80. But ArcGIS is running Java on IIS. So now we wanted to speed run. And in case you're wondering what RSS in ArcGIS looks like, you can specify an RSS URL for some obscure reason. So yeah. I'm um, sorry about the NTLM bugs, everyone. So Windows does want you to be safe. They do have some built-in protections. Uh, one of them is Mark of the Web, which you might have seen before. Um, if you were to download a file from the internet, it sits a little flag on the document, like a Word document or some other things as well. And basically, it just says, nah, I'm not going to use all of the features. I'm just going to let you like briefly look at it. You can click the little warning to make it go away, but it's safe. Um, the WordPad issue that I mentioned earlier, that just bypassed it. I don't think they even had Mark of the Web on WordPad files. Oh, no. No. And also, if you Git clone something and there's a document in it, it also just doesn't set the flag. It's great. They also have uh, this from, what, Windows NT days? Um, they're called safe zones. This is a recent screenshot, Thomas. Yeah, this is from Windows 11, as you can see, with the little X's in the top right hand corners. Um, yeah, you can see that because it says scripting of Java applets, it's very up to date and protects you against many things. Uh, the little thing down the bottom with the user authentication, it stops some hashes over port 445, but that's about it. So it's time to query some hashes from some software before NTLM goes away. 
So we're going to talk about a few things, image magic and graphics magic, VLC media player, aspos.net, high Q PDF, uh, the Q stands for quality as we find out, uh, Java on iOS and Windows, calendars, Nougat and iCredential, RSS feeds and Outlook, MS Office URI handlers and Outlook, and Git for Windows. So graphics magic is generally regarded as the safe -er one because it's a relatively fuzzed fork of image magic. So it's a massive attack surface. Image magic is generally associated with image tragic, which everyone will remember from a few years ago. Uh, but graph image magic didn't leak a hash over port 445. So it will leak a hash via SVG converting to anything via a UNC path href. And it's noted in the documentation as SSRF, but there is nothing about hashes or UNC paths. Um, VLC player. So you can just load a playlist file and it's got a UNC path in it and it will go away and fetch the hash. Um, our old workmate, Ahmed, he disclosed that and then VLC were like, it's a Windows problem. No, it's a VLC problem. I mean, it's also a Windows problem, but come on, guys. Um, you could also do it in iTunes and Windows Media Player. I'm sorry if you still use those programs. There's probably maybe six of you in the audience that still use Windows Media Player and iTunes for Windows. I'm sorry. There's also lots of other formats and protocols that may or may not support NTLM. I mean, I'd tell you to go and look at them, but VLC don't care. So, Espose.net is a lovely piece of document processing software. Anyone who's ever spent any time on the red team or doing any kind of pen testing will know just how rich an attack surface document processing is. It has a few known documented security issues. SSRF, server side request forgery, NTLM hash leakage, file inclusion, and it's right there on their web application security when loading resources page. So they know about them and they have front footed it. So leaking hashes out port 45 is relatively abundant and low value within an ecosystem. So if port 445, any good system administrator will block this port on a firewall because there's no reason that it needs to talk to the internet. Port 80, however, is not as blocked. So when Windows sees a UNC path, those little slashes we saw before, it only knows how to do one thing. And it takes a little bit of work to get it out via HTTP. So let's try. So I just wanted to look at the district plan for our city and not go to the cybersecurity emergency response team. So there's a piece of software in Aotearoa, New Zealand called ISOPLAN, developed by a company called ISOVIST. So again, I alluded to not talking to you about council software. It's so niche and weird and the people who develop it know councils and local government, but they might not necessarily know security. And anyone who's ever spent time as a pen tester, so much of it is vibes based, you could tell that this thing had been pen tested before you, yeah, you could just tell. So, headless PDF generation is so dumb. I'm not, this is not a talk about headless PDF generation. It's a well-known and well-documented attack surface within web applications. But sometimes you need to turn HTML into PDFs, which is, you know, there's a few well-known places you can look for bugs. Because basically HTML gives you a lot of primitives to do some fun and dangerous things, such as iframes, portals, embeds. So these had all been blocked there had been some hardening done, which is great. However, cat pictures were not blocked. So I managed to get an image tag to give up an NTLM hash on port 80. And so my first question was, what even is this? So we talked about HiQ PDF. Over a million downloads in Nougat for this package. Nougat is the package repo for .NET. It has a settings.xml file and the default property for NTLM authentication is true. So I guess I really just wanted to know how this happened. And then I looked into it a bit and I figured out how it happened. You can tell it's really high quality by the 3D rendered box art. This is the very height of technology. So the other thing we found is because of all the ArcGIS stuff, Java on IIS is a lovely place to look. Uh, the HTTP URL connection function used to pass hashes by default. We're not entirely sure it does now. I tried a couple of test projects to see. It seems to be safe, but it is still out there causing issues, see GeoServer and ArcGIS. 
So Java calls the underlying Win32 API, which is a Win HTTP request, and Blaze InfoSec um, have a very good write-up about coaxing things out on port 80, and they even made a Stack Overflow post proving it. We had to do a little uh, Lord of the Rings meme, you know. It's compulsory. We're from New Zealand. We have to. So they also have one other little security thing on Windows, and that's this prompt that comes up now and then, and it's like, please don't click me, it's unsafe, do you really want to continue? Are you sure you want to get hacked? And then I'm sure no one clicks yes ever, right? Right? Yeah, it's a security control. I mean, it's fair. That's probably what their lawyers want. Like, they want the functionality, but their lawyers are like, if you don't have this prompt, people will get angry and we could get sued. So if you want to have a bug in a Microsoft product, you need to get past this. You need to have basically no warning that it's going to be fun and dangerous and you're going to get people's ashes or run some code. So with that in mind, let's see what we can find in the Microsoft ecosystem. Enter iCredentials. So it's just an interface, but it does some stuff. When we first got some hashes out on port 80, we started looking at the code and going, what? is this? Why is this? Turns out it's not banana water, it's not gross and made up. It's just developers making logic errors, doing dumb things. It provides the base authentication interface for retrieving credentials for web client authentication. And it's used in .NET a lot. And some of the anti-patterns that it has are weird and they fall back to some dumb things like in NuGet. So you've probably seen NuGet before if you've ever touched C Sharp. It's reasonably integral to the uh, .NET ecosystem. And they have some very good advice for storing credentials. Just put them in the NuGet config file, it will encrypt it, it will be fine. But it also just falls back to NTLM sometimes. Hello, yes, I would like 500 of my coworkers' hashes, please. It does it on NuGet Restore, by the way, which it does it when you get cloned something in like Visual Studio, and that bypasses all safety checks. There's no little don't click me button. So Jim got a nice new e-bike from Microsoft. It's very zippy. Jim had to be very specific with Microsoft. Yeah, I had to make him a video with the breakpoint set. And I had to be like, it happens here. This is where it happens. It happens right here, Microsoft. Please believe me. So just we had a random thought. Like, what if we reframe it as an SSRF problem? Like, what if instead of trying to get NTLM hashes out, we pretended it was a server and not a client anymore, and we just thought it was just HTTP something? There's a lot of harmless HTTP integrations in Microsoft products, like RSS. Don't know why I'm mentioning that. H, uh, URI schemes, don't know why I'm mentioning that either. And web service in Excel, I'm just mentioning that one. If you think of these interactions like a flavor of SSRF, you can just find some new cool things. Like what if you just suddenly redirect a resource? So we did that. We redirected things to a nice little UNC path and it just does things, it just happily switches protocols and tries to auth. Browsers don't do that. Browsers go like, where are you trying to go? This is a dangerous redirect. Yeah. But we wrote some quick little code and then started pointing things at it. So this is Microsoft bug number two. So we might have rabbit holed a little bit with the URI handlers. Uh, quick recap, every time you install a program on Windows, it installs a URI handler, which is a little scheme that you can embed in a website or something to allow that program to be opened automatically. So I dumped every single URI scheme from my Windows machine, and I wanted to see which one Outlook would warn on. And it was nearly all of them, except for the Microsoft URI schemes, which was very weird. And it just straight up opens words Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint or Access, if anyone still uses that, and fetches the remote resource. So now we have a little bit of an idea what to do when we fetch remote resources. So no warnings, one click, embedded in an email, should be a relatively safe thing to do. 
So they've asked us to not spill the beans. So could everyone just like block their eyes and ears? Uh, yeah. There are some security controls in place. All files will open in a preview mode, which is good. Mark of the web is on it. And you can't put UNC paths in the URI scheme. So you can't straight up convince someone to load a file, which is good. So the URI handlers essentially look like this. MS Word, title of the thing you want to open. OFE, open for editing. U, short for URL, and then you just give it an HTTP link and it'll rush off and fetch that. And you can also force a file extension change, which is quite fun. And here's a little video of this happening. So essentially we are spinning up our little redirector in the top right, and then we spin up everyone's favorite hacking tool responder. And then we just go into our email and click a link. I would click that link. I'd totally click that link. And then we leak someone's hash. Mm. Thank you, everyone. So there are some much better NTLM related bugs than the ones we've been showing. Uh, Hafei Lee from Checkpoint Research uh, discovered a bug called Monica Link. And so this technique allows for a different and usually blocked file extension to be loaded. So a whole new class of bug comes into play. In 2024, Monica Link came up. So we have um, two things. We have test.rtf, then an exclamation mark, and something. So we have the file moniker and the composite moniker. Um, the Outlook talk yesterday covered this sort of stuff a little bit as well. So the component object model will look up whatever is after the exclamation mark, which we now potentially control through a redirect. We have three days left until Patch Tuesday, so have fun, everyone. So we found some more stuff. We were still bored. Um, you can also bypass existing CVEs with that same one weird trick. So back in 2023, uh, some researchers at Veronis discovered a nice little CVE. There's two email headers that are sort of affected. There's the content class sharing thing, like you're sharing a document or a calendar or an RSS feed maybe, and then a X sharing content URL, which in their case they used a UNC path. We gave it a little HTTP path. Microsoft's fix was to add a nice little warning. They love their warnings. The please don't click me little warning. Guess what happens if you just redirect it to a UNC path? Uh, Microsoft triages it. That's what happens. And this is essentially what it looks like. It's a Microsoft instruction telling you to click a link with no warnings. Seems kind of bad, right? I would add your calendar, though. Uh -huh. And then we dropped it to the MSRC, and we had a fun little journey. Hi, this is classed as important and you've accepted it for immediate servicing. Can you please let me know if this is eligible for a bounty? No. Outlook's out of scope? No. It says here in the link you just said that it is in scope. Uh, it's a moderate, I guess? You just told me that it was important in the same email. No, we've reclassified it, sorry. Yeah, so it was fixed last patch Tuesday. And it was the only moderate. <laughs> so this is my dog, Lupe. She recently had cruciate ligament surgery. And the amount of the surgery was the same amount that a bug bounty from Microsoft would have been. So, you know, thanks, Microsoft. Sorry again, MSRC team. You're very lovely people. It's so nice. Oh, they also said to say about the bug before that it's been feature flagged, so it's mostly fixed, but sort of not. Yeah, I had to say that because I, I quite like them now. So RSS, for all six of you still using it in Outlook, we discovered something called an OPML file, which allows you to import an RSS feed, which is obviously critical functionality within Outlook and Microsoft. So interestingly, the web request would be made while the warning box was showing. So full marks to Microsoft for almost getting there. Outlook would also follow a redirect path to a UNC and leak a hash. And we triaged it with Microsoft, and they initially said, yeah, it's moderate. And I said, cool, yeah, that makes sense. But now we know about these cool Outlook headers. So what happens if we combine URI schemes with these cool new headers that we have? 
Outlook has a feed handler which will open RSS feed directly in Outlook. Um, obviously four slides back is how we know about the URI handlers. Under normal circumstances, it will prompt to open Outlook and give a warning. However, if you embed it in a sharing header, it, it won't warn. It was initially deprioritized by Microsoft as several clicks were involved, one click. It's a bug, but moderate. And this is what it looks like. Again, Microsoft wording saying, please click this thing. Would you click that, Thomas? I would so click to add your RSS feed. Thanks. I love RSS. <laughs> Enter Visual Studio. We went back to it again. It can get clone things. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Git, but it's kind of like Subversion or uh, Maven. No, everyone knows Git. You can get cloned from a bunch of things, like SSH, which is one of the normal things. Same with like unauthed HTTP, which is like a public GitHub repo, and you've just copy pasted the link. Uh, auth HTTP, like a private GitHub repo, and you've copy pasted the link. You can also get cloned from a file path, or on Windows, you can get cloned from an SMB share. Apparently. Which is weird, but like, it's fine. I'm sure people do that. But we're just going to focus on the auth HTTP. So the command line, it's secure by default. It asks for auth, kind of. But what if we just, you know, don't put in a username or password? Yeah, what if, Thomas? Let's find out. Oh, surely it just doesn't send surely a username. It won't send anything. Nah, it won't send anything. So by default, it just sends a hash of your current account. <sighs> but, like, it's fine. I can see the use cases for it. Like, say you're in an internal environment and you've got like some weird web server you get cloned from. You probably want it most. But what it is is it's promising. Like, maybe some other things. Uh, you know, they want to get your username and password and do stuff. Like, GUIs. How do they get your get credentials? They prompt you for them. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no. So, get credential manager. It will do things for you. It will, by default, pass a blank username and password. Visual Studio uses Git Credential Manager. So, on the right, our good old friend, Responder. That's just going to nicely listen there, and then we'll open some Visual Studio. And then, oh, my coworker sent me this cool link. I'm just going to go Git clone this. It's on the internet. It's I blindly clone things all the time. I'm a security professional, Thomas. I do too, but like seriously. And whoa, what's that? That's an NTLM hash that it just sent. Yay. So some fun side notes. It also works in Git submodules. So you can't just trust GitHub because you could have a nice little link to some attacker's thing as a Git submodule like 10 folders deep. So do you know what blindly clone submodules by default, Thomas? Do you have any idea? Uh, Visual Studio? You are correct, Thomas. Oh, wow. It also works in things like uh, VC package. You can point to a get URL and it will just also download it. On... NPM also for funsies. Yep. And other IDEs like JetBrains and then like GitHub Desktop, they don't do this. So we told Microsoft and then they came back with this fun response. We'll just give you a moment to digest this. Actually, I'll cut out the, like, extra words. Git cloning from an untrusted source is the same as browsing an untrusted SMB share. Oh, is it Microsoft? Yeah, I do that all the time, browsing on. Same. Yeah. So we tried to find where the security boundary was after they came back. And we were like, mm, OK, so it's not a Visual Studio problem because they said no. So maybe it's a Git Credential Manager problem, but then Git Credential, uh, credential Manager uses Git, and, but Git uses libcurl, which is compiled with the use NTLM flags. But it's actually a Visual Studio problem, but ugh. We don't know where the problem is. It's sort of everywhere, but nowhere, and no one wants to take blame for it, really. Microsoft will patch anything that you can prove that it's in their products. Anything else? That's a Windows problem. I just like the VLC problem. team. Uh, you can use that on your next red team, I guess, if you want to hack some developers. So where we ended up 
was we have four bugs reported to MS, two bounties and one swag. I'm so sorry to my dog from the previous slides. Your surgery came later than expected for some weird reason. One not a bug, which, which is git. One yes, it's a bug, but it's not a priority. I mean, that's fair, it's RSF. And, you know, to get to this point, we have a very, very rigorous methodology, obviously. I mean, I have a spreadsheet. Uh, it's actually a text file on my desktop. So yeah, this is basically how we found all these bugs. Anywhere you see an HTTP, just put a responder URL and see what Windows does and you'll be delighted with the results. Image tag, do it. Sharing tag, do it. RSS. Oh, so who uh, uses RSS? Yeah, no one uses RSS. So, where to next? Um, there are a lot of places this could be a thing and I mean, it's just HTTP, so like, build servers, they can have links. Artifact yeah, repos. Yeah. Pipelines, they could have links. Document processing things like, uh, I don't know, PDF generators. Yeah, they could do it too. Maybe Word has it. Maybe Teams has it. No one uses Teams though, so. No one uses Teams. No. Uh, maybe video games. I don't know. Maybe drop a link in chat. Yeah, I reckon video games is something I want to look at because I like playing video games for research. Yeah, I should do that in work time. Our boss is here. <laughs> Basically, anywhere you could put a URL in is probably a good place to start. But also, we want to talk to you folks as well, because there's probably a lot of people out there who have some great ideas of where to look, so we would like to hear from them. Yeah, and just go turn NTLM off if you can. It probably will break everything, but turn it off. Yeah, turn it off and then turn it back on immediately when someone screams. Yeah, use Kerberos, because that's uh, more secure. Anyway, this is the end of our talk. We have speedrun it, much like our NTLM bugs. Um, but finding bugs doesn't happen in isolation, so a big thank you to everyone named. Um, yeah, and thank you for the MSRC for listening and meeting with us. They are genuinely good folks who they need more of them because there's only 30 of them, apparently, which is not nearly enough. And thanks for inviting us to your party as well. That was fun. Yeah, that was good. And thank you for everyone who has published their research. This is something I don't say lightly. Um, every piece of research published leads to more research, so please keep disclosing, please keep blogging. It's so good reading it. And also, thank you for the DEF CON organizers. You guys are awesome. And hacking is a team sport, and please come up to us afterwards. If you have any ideas where to get hashes out of, we want to know. We want more moderates that we don't get bounties for. Perfect. There is a microphone there for tall people who can ask questions. Cool. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.